Leza. Welcome to Menorca Pulsar. It's a Thank pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure is ours. Well, first of all, who is Nadeza and what the hell is he doing in Menorca? Oh, uh, Jeremy and I came here to this wonderful island um, to, to teach this workshop. I can't even say it's a workshop, it's an experience to share, to share our honest selves, uh, how we got where we got, to share the honesty of how we live our lives as artists. And I think Menorca is a wonderful place for that. It's so remote, it's so beautiful. There is a 360 degree view of wonderful landscapes and clouds. It's a symphony. So it's a perfect location for, for this type of experience. Good. So thanks for having us. No, thank you for being here. And uh, well, I told also Jeremy that uh, many of the questions are made by the students. They went through a lot of things during this week. So they, uh, yeah, they have uh, many questions that they wanted to ask you. And most of the interview will be based and the questions, yeah, because they are, they're amazed in both cases, yours and your amazed is like, you both do a lot of things. I mean, you're now into painting, but you come from the cinema and you character design and you do a lot of things. And how do you balance that in your life, your priorities? How do you get to do so many things? I don't think of all of those things as being that different. I think all of them are, dif are different instruments for you to try and see which one fits to sing your song the best, your song about you as a person, as a human being. And luckily, since my childhood, I got a chance to try all sorts of different things, dancing, uh, theater, which is a big part of my life, um, drawing, painting, even different types of drawing and painting as I was growing up. So it became a norm for me to try different things until you find one that speaks to you for no particular reason. You just feel it's the language that you like. So um, the language that I learned when, uh, as a concept artist for film, the language that I learned as, an, as a performer in theater, the language that I learned uh, as a poet when I, when I used to write poetry a lot, and as a painter and drawer, all of those instruments, they fit really well for what I'm trying to sing as a human being. So that's, I, don't, I think it's beautiful to learn all those things and see what, what else is there you can discover to make this even more beautiful and, and more rich. Well, and I guess that having a partner who is also an artist makes it even more richer, makes it even more Absolutely, it's, it's, it's incredibly inspiring and also it's reassuring that your idea actually works. And for the, the same thing we see with this, with this workshop, uh, from the beginning to the end we see the transformation happening to people in front of, in front of our eyes. So um, the ability to discover yourself as an artist and human being at the same time, it's beautiful and, and it it's, it's reassuring and inspiring to see when, to see around you and when you see in your partner, person who you spend, share your life with, that what else, what other proof do you need? And what is it that you admire the most from him as an artist, uh, from his artwork? Uh, his, um, his kindness and strength, strength of character fearlessness um, in front of the unknown, which, which inspires me to be a braver, better, kinder person, and his ability to transform people's lives at instant. You can see uh, he meets a new person he has never seen at the opening, at the workshop, whatever it is, and suddenly after this, the person is transformed, the person is inspired, and when the person leaves this conversation, this situation, you can see they're going back with something extra, something opens up in them, and that uh, ability to, to uh, work this magic, that's, that amazes me. So your daily life is like a 24-7 art? Uh, yeah, and that's, that's, I, I feel incredibly blessed and privileged to, to be able, uh, as we said, to be uh, to be able to be an artist fully, from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, even while you're dreaming, dreaming, you are being an artist. So your full life is being an artist, uh, and it's I couldn't ask for another 
life. It's beautiful. And has this helped you in your transition into painting? Because, I mean, it may have been hard to do the transition as a conceptual artist in the films to painting. I think the challenge was only mental because I have, it, it wasn't my first time painting. It's just, the funny part is that when I was a young artist just starting the art school, I actually didn't even realize that I, I admired painting as an art form, but I didn't realize that it's not an archaic type of art. I didn't know that this whole vast world exists. And only when um, when I joined the safe house at Lear in San Francisco, it's, it was a special place and I was incredibly lucky to be exposed to this whole world of uh, a traditional artist. I think that's when the switch happened and it started brewing and marinating in the back of my head. So the scary, uh, the scary part of the switch was more mental, but in reality I was, I was ready for it. And you ever thought about like a way back, like putting the characters you paint into a movie or? I think subconscious, subconsciously, absolutely. There was a moment because I was, uh, as a concept artist, char characters, as I said, was my favorite part of the, of the, whole, uh, of the whole picture. Uh, but as a concept artist, I always felt like you get to explore the, the exterior of the character. You get to explore costumes, you get to explore visual effects related to the character, all the things that are exterior, because the interior part is explored by an actor. And suddenly, I discovered that by um, making the character your own and expressing it in the form of painting, and I have other forms of art that I previously experienced, I've also included into the painting part, which, which is a preparatory work for a painting. I suddenly discovered that you can also explore the character internally. You can go in, inwards, you don't have to be as uh, outspell everything. So you, your character explore, exploration goes into two dimensions. You can explore emotional world. How does it help you? I mean, like being organized, like the movie, all the things in the movie, like tight schedules and deadlines mm -hmm. and all that stuff helped you being organized as a painter, as an artist? And I think so. I, I, I think so. Because you have uh, as the schedule as a concept artist, as I say, it's very intense. So you, it becomes a norm. So being organized, it, it, was, it, it becomes a part of your existence. You, you, you were just org you organize your brain, and being organized means being organized in your studio, being organized with your references, being organized when you work with uh, work on a show, being organized in big and small aspects of your life, and it just makes things easier because there is enough problems there to solve and get tangled in. Yeah, there's a lot of things out there. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, actually, as for your inspiration source, is it still more about film, about that kind of stuff, or are your sources moving more towards painting? Um, I think that my main source of inspiration is actually not in the painting world. In the painting, meaning the uh, de dealing with paint on a two-dimensional surface. My main surf, uh, source of inspiration, and sometimes it's a conscious uh, decision to go into different genres that are considered art, um, music, theater, film, all of these things that I just mentioned, because I believe that all of them uh, speak about the universal same thing as painting, uh, just in a different language. So uh, there are certain theater productions, certain physical theater, uh, productions that I really like, certain costume designers, certain film directors, and I know that when I'm feeling down and I feel I exhausted my uh, resources of inspiration and energy, I know where to look to lift myself up. So you could move anywhere in the world and get the same inspiration, or you are affected by what surrounds you. I mean, Jeremy told us that he would move to Europe, and how about you? I think it's I think it's a little bit of both. Definitely not being attached to a specific ge geographic location is a big part of it. Because once you realize that um, art is a universal language, and here is a proof of, like Jeremy was saying, we have such a nice group of people here. One is a wizard, another one is an archer, the third one is a scientist. So. 
Um, it just uh, tells you that art language is so universal that you can make a home, your, your studio, your harbor for creating art anywhere in the world. And definitely where you move is going to affect that. But there, I think there are um, two dimensions that the artist lives in. First of all, when you go outside, when you don't create, and you have to make a conscious effort, are you, do, are you okay with dealing all the noise of a big city? Are you that type of artist? Do you need that type of stimulation? Or you're more of an artist where the outside world has to be quiet and peaceful, where you can gather your thoughts in peace. Uh, and the second world is how you organize the studio. And we talked a, lo a little bit about it in the workshop. And that's the second world where we, as artists, spend so much time. And so it's incredibly important how you set up that world, that immediately as you walk into that world, as you uh, step into a studio, you know that this is the universe you want to exist in. And if it's something that's bothering you, you have to recognize what it is, because sometimes it's just like a fly buzzing over your ear, something is irritating you. So yeah, and just uh, get it out of the way, adjust it, so every little element, smells, sounds, everything works to help you out, not to get in your way. So it's an outside and inside experience, uh, and it's not tied to geographical location. Yeah, well you said, you mentioned that the world is so big, there's a lot of stuff going on, like uh, how about the, uh, all the social media, how do you deal with it? Is it more a tool or more an obstacle or you're more used to it? Or I think about social media as a, a... Well, I can compare it to a cake. You can have too much of a cake and get sick or you can have a piece of cake um, to celebrate someone's birthday. So I think it's very important how you control yourself while using social media. And because Jeremy, Jeremy mentioned it's such a new medium, a lot of people get too much of that cake and they don't know what to do with it. Um, I think, I hope that in time people will become more conscious as they do become conscious about what they eat. I think nowadays the, the, um, the knowledge of nutrition, what to eat and what not to eat becomes more universal. Everyone is getting healthier because they take care and they stop for a second and they consider. I think and I hope that the same thing will happen with social media because it can be good, it can be bad, it's all up to an individual who uses it, how he uses it, how much time he uses it for, um, and how much it lets that social media get into a head, into one's head. Yeah, true. So it's very, very, it, it's very important to be aware how, what's your stance and how, how you use it. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes I guess that people uh, are confused about if it's a starting point or a goal. They don't, they, they even forget where they come from or exactly. where they lead them to. Yeah, and, exactly. And, uh, and as well, if we talk about where we come from, right, what, what is it that, that you believed in when you started doing art that you no longer believe in? Well, one thing I just mentioned that I believe that painting, the world of traditional painting, creating art as if it was, as people have been creating it for centuries, I thought it's archaic, so obviously I don't think so right now, that's for one. And another thing, I think I was separating the worlds of science, the worlds of theater, the worlds of poetry, all the worlds of creative work, I, th I thought they, they exist separately. and. Nowadays, still, even right now, it's amazing how all of these little things that seems, to, all of these concepts and fields of human uh, endeavors, how all of them come into one, that, uh, that art is so close to science, science is clo so close to uh, poetry. It's all about how you look, uh, it's all about the perception, how you look at it, so that's, that doesn't get old. So there is nothing that you're happy you left behind in this process? No, it just gets better. It doesn't get easier, but it gets better in terms of uh, uh, you just become more, more and more aware person. And as you become aware, you become aware of good things and you become aware of bad things. So... You never stop learning. <laughs> you never stop learning. So tell us one of the most interesting things you learned lately? Lately, we're speaking like a like, yeah. week or year or... Whatever you want, I mean, one recent thing that you... Thing interesting that, that you learned. 
Such must a be broad, many. it's such a broad, <laughs> such a broad question. It's such a broad question. Oh, I need to think about that. You know, something like I don't know, like last year, you didn't have it in your mind, and that just now you have it, and you're happy to have it. Well, I guess it's it just. Uh, we try to be, when we're not painting, when we're not creating, we're trying to see what the world has to offer, what's the knowledge of the world has to offer. So one of the interesting uh, bits of knowledge was about the science of sleep and what it does to human beings. How sleep is, we know why sleep is important um, and what happens in the brain why, when you're asleep and the, the, how the learning process during your sleep works. I'm not going to get into scientific details, just to keep it short, that um, the states of consciousness can do so much to you, to, to you as a person, as a human being, and the stage of sleep is incredibly important for creativity and learning. That, that's one of the main things. Just, I don't know if it's the main thing that I learned that, that changed, changed, changed me, but... Well, but it is one. It is that's one. it. Okay. That's, it yeah, is we one. got it. Okay, we got, got it. it. Got it done. <laughs> Good. And um, well, you, since you come from a very uh, methodical world, like concept art, tight scales, and how you get to put your intuition, your into that. I mean, it must be hard because scheduling intuition seems hard. It's actually not that hard because when uh, when you're part of the concept art team, like art department, even though every artist gets to do a little bit of everything, their strength, uh, everyone has their own strengths. And I think one of the fun things about who I am as an artist, I was able to implement it into the world of concept art, and it's that practice of juxtaposing seemingly unrelated things together and coming up with something new. It's like reinventing things, reverse engineering things which I continue doing right now in, in, my, in, my, in my artwork, uh, in paintings and in drawings. And I think it all comes from my childhood once again. At the workshop I mentioned an example when, since I was little, and I have a very eccentric grandma, and I think she was one of the biggest influence on me uh, as an artist, as a human being. So apart from the fact that she was speaking poetry to me, which was a normal, childhood when you when you have a dialogue with a person and you speak in prose in, as a monologue and the other person my grandma would answer to you in in a poem that was a normal thing for me and one and she liked to play games with games with me and my my younger brother of i call them broken logic so things that are technically not logical but they sound when they, you put them in the words uh, that are logical that, that they are logical for example that um, case of uh, imagine a, a mouse living within the wall and she would tell me Nadia tell me if it's right a wall has a mouse a mouse has ears does it mean that the wall has ears too because it has a mouse and imagine what it does to a fragile little mind I was giggling I understood you still even though you're five five years old you still understand there's something wrong about it but what it did to my imagination I immediately imagined big ears growing out of the wall. And that type of broken logic and having so much fun, fun with it and having experienced it as a, a little kid, I carried through all of the artistic um, stages of my development as a human being and I was able to find a way to use it in concept artwork. Uh, especially during the research time, and this, I do the same thing for my for my work as a painter and drawer. So somehow you grew up with this kind of mixture of logical mm -hmm. and, and poetry. It's, it's exactly, weird. exactly. Uh, taking taking a concrete thing and making it symbolic, turning it into a metaphor. There's a, I find I find it fascinating. I find it that. It is so much fun to do because, as I like to say, that words that we, we say exp uh, to express ourselves, they actually are just symbols and they trap a much bigger meaning of what we're trying to say. And that's why I think painting and visual language in general is so beautiful because you can say so much more, unless you're a, an amazing writer or a poet. Uh, you can say so much more. 
And I think it also comes from that let's not take artists, let's just take human beings in general. We live our lives outwards mainly. We go out, we meet our uh, other people, we go to a theater play, we go to a bar, uh, bar. That's living outwards. And what we don't do enough as a human race, we don't live enough inwards. And the world inwards is as big as the world outwards. We just somehow during our development, as we grow older, somehow we forget about it. And I think that as artists, we get a chance, we impose it, it's necessary to impose it on ourselves, to have this daily exercise, um, beautiful exercise of going into that world of inwards and exploring it. And that world has so much abstraction and it doesn't have the limitations of words. You don't need to put stuff in, uh, you don't need to put meaning into words. It's very abstract. Uh, and as artists, we find a way to express it in a way that other person sees it and they understand. Maybe they are not able to speak it into words, what they see, how they feel things, and they don't have to. And that's why um, paintings and, and drawings, just in, in general, visual art is so beautiful, because you don't need to say anything. Yeah. And I guess somehow in your case, that's why your characters are not doing something specific. They're just about to do something or just done something recently? Absolutely. Like and it, it, a poetry thing about it? Like absolutely. Uh, it's absolutely. Um, everything from the choice of a prop to choice of a pose to choice of a costume, environment, set, everything is a metaphor. Nothing is concrete. Uh, and I think that this is my way of trying to bring the inward world, the abstract world, the unspeakable world, into the world of concrete, where even if the picture seems to be strange, somehow it makes sense. Yeah. So you want the viewer to, uh, to fulfill the character, like to give him life, don't you? I, mean... I just hope that there is a human in this strange place, there is a place for human connection, that no matter how strange, a person would would see would see the work and they would it somehow would feel familiar. So it's like a game, like well, those well, games you were playing with your grandmother. I mean, like uh, yeah, I wouldn't say the word the word game because there is a. I think there is a. It's different. Hmm. Well, in a good sense. How in a, yeah, in a good sense, uh, I would say it's just in the. An experiment on myself to connect with other human beings through yeah. through such a journey. You're inviting them into your world somehow. Yeah, like. because that's one of the things I think we we don't have enough nowadays is human connection, especially when you spend so much time in the studio alone, um, which is necessary. This is the way for me to connect to, with other human beings. And you said that uh, about word game because of the video games or something like maybe, that? Maybe, maybe. I just like game, <laughs> game, next, next thing I think, plotting some things, uh, something yeah. to make things, manipulating things. And uh, I try for things to come natural. In fact, I try to leave as much room for accidents to happen in my process of creation. So, uh, yeah. Because. Video games is something that you were never interested in? No, I, I worked in video games for, for, for some... It was my first concept art job that, that I've experienced after art school. I was creating characters for a video game company. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, it's just playing video games for me not, means not at that time I could have been creating and working on my own worlds, going inwards. I'm not saying anything bad. It's great. Uh, way to have fun and hang out with friends but once again everything in moderation uh, eyes on eyes on what your life is about not wasting time and doing what you want to do with it because you never know when when it's gonna end yeah and uh well many artists are concerned about you know that question about like what's the concept behind your art but you haven't been a concept artist. Are you more familiar with having a concept behind your artwork? Uh, it's 
There are two, and sometimes people who are not familiar with what concept art for film is, sometimes they think, oh, is it the same as conceptual art, meaning of the term in, in fine art world? There are two different things, just to put it out there. There are two different things. But the concept, yeah, I do have a concept behind my work, but it's not concrete behind every piece. Uh, the concept of my work is more behind, uh, um, the concept behind my work is more uh, how do I figure out the approach of combining all of my life experiences and making, making the approach uh, in my paintings, in my drawings, as personal as possible. And it's not an easy thing to do because it's a lot of error and trial. Uh, you have to see, you have to strip down the things that you think you are, but you are not. You have to really re get to reacquainted with yourself. And I think that's the main concept. And from that, I somehow fall into concrete things that give me ideas for, for the plots of my paintings. And because I love poetry, because I love metaphors, they kind of, those things relieve me from being concrete in the narrative. So even though there is a narrative, but it's not a narrative in the sense once upon a time there was blah, blah, blah. So there is a concept, but it's much more abstract. And sometimes I don't, I don't, I don't even know, but I trust my gut that this is what I'm supposed to do at the moment when I'm having a photo shoot and I have an idea for a photo shoot. I leave enough time, uh, I leave enough space for experimentation, but I also have some sort of framework of where I want to go. And trusting that gut feeling, it never, it never fails you if you believe that that's exactly what you want to do. Like Jeremy was saying, if that's what you like, that's what you want to do, you have to trust it. And the result, results it brings you, first of all, it's a wonderful surprise usually, because it comes from somewhere, uh, from subconscious. So sometimes you don't think about those things. And that surprise brings so much pleasure and it's so honest that you don't you connect with other people immediately and also you kind of by being yourself you let, let them know that it's okay for them to be themselves too yeah true and in your particular case uh, you have a strong relation with uh, russian folklore one of them yes definitely and actually it's a thing that i have been consciously rediscovering because i think all of us come with a baggage of experience that we think uh, that we take for granted, but if you think about every human being, especially if you travel, Jeremy said traveling uh, traveling is important for every human being, and I agree with that. We had such wonderful different experiences, uh, and only recently I have been uh, rediscovering all the little things hap that happened to me since I can remember myself, and finding uh, the echoes of that in my decision-making of in, in the preferences and what I choose to do with my artwork, where I choose to go, it all comes from back then, yeah. all so the you, roots. So you would encourage the people to research their own roots, their own local folklore, and because we, they usually don't pay attention to those things, where they come from, where the roots, their cultural roots are. So this is something you would encourage the people to do? Absolutely, because that's the real treasure that no one else has. That, that number, well, I don't want to say the mathematical terms, but all of those experiences, all of bad, good, whatever they are, it's, it's the treasure and it's an, it could be an incredible source of inspiration if, one, if a person just takes a step back and looks at it from the outside perspective. Because some things about your childhood, you don't realize that they are actually special not even childhood, adolescence, all of those years, until you have a, con a conversation with someone who is from a different part of the world and tells you, I can't believe you experienced that. And you're like, well, for me, it was normal. What do you, what do you mean special? And then you realize it is special. Maybe I should look into it. And maybe that's where I need to look for my source of inspiration because it's one of the paths that lead to pure authenticity, to honesty, to, to the real you. Well, you both insisted in, in that point in not trying to be anyone else, like trying to know yourself and trying to be you. That's, yeah. that ha has that been your, I mean, your main, uh, like, I, let's so to say, like the core of your success, of all your development as an artist? 
trying to be you all the time? I don't know. Success is such a strange world because I don't know. Success means it's like um, success. There's some big finale to the to to something that you have been trying to do for a while. I think. No, success just, more in the sense that you've finally been able to do what you want, to do what you love. You don't need like a second job and, or something like that. I think, well, in little, yeah, okay. So here I think there, there are two things. The, I already accepted that this search is going to be a lifelong. I already accepted that there will be no final big celebration victory um, reaching that final one, uh, big one goal. So, and another one, the success that you were talking about is celebrating little breakthroughs. And I think I started making con more conscious decision about uh, giving it a little bit more respect because in our day and age, everything is so moving so fast and we set ourselves certain goals and we reach them. And then the next day we already forgot that we reached them and we try for something else. So there is no space and time to stop and actually think, that was good. Let, did we like it? Did we not like it? What did we learn from it? You know, it all comes back to, to that, making the conscious decision of what you want to do next with your life based on what you just did. So what's your next challenge? Uh, my next challenge, just dig deeper. I feel like uh, in all of this past few years experience, I only scratched the surface. Of, where, of that exploration of the world within. And when, I, when every time you do it, you see the potential and the vastness. It's like, you know, Alice in Wonderland, looking through the door, seeing that amazing garden. How do I get there? How do I get there? So I feel like I only scratched the surface and it's, it's a wonderful feeling that there's so much potential and so, so much magic to discover. So it, the journey only is beginning. Yeah, it's always should be. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, in fact, you do many things, so you got many journeys going on. Yes. <laughs> the best way would be to find the, to find to find a way to plant them all in one garden well, and see how they all grow together. Well, that garden is you, actually. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And does it help you to get through your own struggles, through your own blocks, and? like having different things that you're interested in, like I mean, such as different as poetry and mm -hmm. concept art. I mean, does that help you when you're through personal struggle or personal block? I think it, uh, definitely. Like, uh, actually it's one of the tools just only recently, maybe a few months ago, I was, I was questioning how can I implement poetry, for example, as you said, in the way of working, how can I make it help? Uh, that previous experience, how I can celebrate it and bring it back into what I'm focused on right now. And I have been brewing it and brewing and marinating the thought uh, in the back of my mind. And only recently I decided I'm going to try to write a poem just for myself, because uh, my English is not good enough to write poetry, um, to, to write poetry what is considered to be good poetry, but I really enjoyed doing it for myself. So I was like, okay, I'll try to write a poem for my paintings. And I print it out and I keep it next to a painting while I'm working it. And what I've noticed that that's the abstract brief, that's the abstract direction that I was looking for that keeps my eyes on the goal of where I'm going with an art piece, but at the same time doesn't limit me because there is enough symbolism, there is enough metaphor, so there is enough space for, for me to breathe creatively, yet moving in the direction, not scattering. Yeah, that helps you. Yeah. And, um, well, people are, well, all the, the students were really, amazed by how active and many things that you do all around. And uh, well, I asked Jeremy as well, but how did you come to this idea of uh, going, like you say, five steps beyond uh, the usual workshops? Did you find a lack of something in the things that you already knew? Well, I think it's just because uh, even for me personally, painting, it's not what I ask myself, why do I paint? And I don't paint to make a picture. Painting is not 100% of my creative process. So I would be lying to myself and other people if it was just a regular painting workshop. Painting is actually 
uh, only a final stage. It's like a relic that I take from the whole experience. 70% of the painting is actually done not, not in front of the canvas handling paint. So it would be not honest for me to say otherwise. So because of this experience, the best way would be to show all the steps, all the, all the seemingly unrelated things that go into the process of creation. Yeah. Um, it was the, the most, for, for us, I think it was the most honest way to do, to, how do you say, the, to make change. No, in, and in fact, both your visions matched very well. I mean, it was like way showing. Uh, I don't know if it was a conscious decision uh, made for, by you, like given two different visions and approaches to to a creative process, or it was just natural. I think it was natural, but it made made sense if you think about it, because. Absolutely. It gives a vivid example of, even though we share this passion for cre creating things, we share the struggles when we create things, but what makes us different is just finding who we are as individuals and then pouring it onto whatever surface, whatever form of art that people are creating. And I think showing it as a living example that there are two people who share the concept of what it is to what it means to be an artist fully, not full time, yet finding your own path while creating throughout the life. It was an important proof to what we were saying, like every little thing that we shared, like in the last day, um, Jeremy showed his photographs, uh, talked about his filmmaking. I talked about creating characters for film, uh, poetry, theater. We shared our own uh, honest experience that, that is different, but yet, it serves the same uh, yeah. the same purpose of being an artist fully. And I guess that any tool is welcome for developing creativity. Yeah. So a... Yeah, and that makes you realize that this is just an example of so many ways you can go about it. That the the sky's the limit. So you plan to be still on the painting world for a while, or painting world? Are but... you trying, thinking about exploring all other medias or? Uh, I am, while I'm painting, when I set up my photo shoots, I'm pushing the way I, I approach for photo shoots, I'm pushing them in the direction of theater, like the way, the way I organize it. I build little sets, I organize little sets that are theater-like. I work not with regular mo models, I try to work with physical theater models, with buto dancers, people who understand my language, and there is a difference. Uh, when I would work with those people, uh, I just need to say a few words. They're like, I got it. And you can see, because we, we belong to the same, the way we think, we belong to the same word, they enjoy whatever I'm asking them to do as much as I, I enjoy it. And suddenly it's not, uh, you let go of control and suddenly the collaboration happens and something new and beautiful happens and you surprise yourself. It's, Letting go, it's, it's controlled accidents. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. And once you got your body of work, body of work uh, how do you find uh, the art market to be like? I mean, it was a new world for you. How was it like to get it's into It's stressful that? to think about it. To be, able to, 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 to be honest, it's stressful to think about it as a market as a market, because when you, curate, uh, when you create something, and I, that's what, an idea that I try to force on, on, upon myself when I, when I work on a show, I really try, even though you know there is a deadline, there is a show coming up, people are relying on you, I try not to think about it, because I found that I create the best honest pieces when I create for the sake of having this honest experience and then sharing it with people. Because as an artist, you will end up creating something. You, it's not like you're gonna stop. So art, the whole idea of the art market, I'm aware of it, but I try to, while I'm in the studio, try not to think about it. It's not easy. It's not. It's not easy. But once again, being in control. Because uh, in your case, in the particular case, it must have been uh, weird to go from commercial things like, uh, well, film is mm -hmm. always about mm -hmm. commercial things and uh, dealing with this uh, balance between commercial art and jumping into fine art 
Do you still have some, some struggle with both? Or? Uh, the main difference, uh, which is at the same time beautiful and terrifying, is that when you work in a concept art world, you are part of the team. Even though you are your own artist, the project that you're working on is, uh, is created by many people. So you have shared responsibility for its success or failure. You have shared responsibility. And then when you work on your own artwork, from the beginning, from the moment you conceive the idea to the moment you finish the painting and it's there on the wall and for people to see, the full responsibility for its success or failure, um, it's fully yours. And it's incredibly liberating, but at the same, it's incredibly terrifying. And it keeps, definitely keeps you on your toes. So that's the main difference, I would say. Have you been able to forget about what you do liking, uh, well, pe all the people liking it? I mean, because uh, when you do like concept art, it's, you're doing stuff for other people. They have to like it. I mean, you're hired for that. Yes. But now it's just you that has yes. to like what you do. Uh, is it still, was it liberating or was it difficult? I mean, just focusing on yourself. Have you been able to forget about what the people will think about what you do? It's a, con it's a constant shadow boxing, I call it. <laughs> it's a constant, your brain is your best friend and your, your worst enemy. So it's always making yourself, if you see you're getting in the stressed uh, mood and if you notice yourself, oh, that people's opinion influenced me and now I'm not doing or stop doing, stop trusting myself, you need to immediately take charge and tell your brain, don't listen to this. If you think that that's the right thing to do, do this. And of course, I try to, if I really need someone's honest opinion, I ask for that opinion, uh, family and friends, people who I trust. And even then, with all the respect you have to consider, because in the end, you are the person who knows you fully. You're the only one. So the final decision is yours as an artist. So it's a constant dialogue. <laughs> Don't listen to this. Be yourself. It's not like we're saying it just to other people. That's something that I constantly repeat to myself in the studio. Well, but the, the students in this workshop also learned that, I mean, by themselves, like, try to just listen to yourself. Yes. And to is. Yes. I know it can sound, for people who from outside, it might sound cheesy, like it's like a slogan, like a motto, listen to yourself, be yourself. But it's true. Yeah. It's true. I leave myself sometimes notes in the studio. Uh, in the, everyone has, uh, has moments of doubt, self-doubt. Self so I leave myself notes in the studio on the ceiling, on the walls, for, for the moments like that. You need to know how to deal with those moments of doubt. Whatever your way is, if it's uh, working out, if it's going hanging out with a trusted friend, if it's just escaping into nature, you have to know in advance yeah. what you're going to do, because those moments happen to everyone. Yeah, because uh, you said, like you said before, you told the people that you used to have these notes around your studio. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about like three or four of them? What oh, the main one is above, is above my head in front of the easel. Paint for yourself. It sounds like, if from the outside, once again, it sounds like an arrogant statement, very self-centered, but uh, you're doing everyone a favor by being yourself. True. If the world uh, consisted of people just people being true to themselves, it would be such a beautiful place. And that's the world we want to live in. And any other important note to myself? <laughs> Mm. like a pig eats its dinner I found that expression in a book I was, re I was reading um, biography I really like biographies I'm really interested in human nature and uh, creative human nature so I was reading a creative person uh, biography and his way of painting was described like a pig eats its dinner but not diminishing it actually describing with how much uh, passion and just going, going at it fully. I just really like the, once again, metaphor. I don't know why some things don't, don't have to be explained, but I loved it and that's a reminder uh, to myself. Paint like a pig eats its dinner. Just paint fully, go for it. 
emotions full on. Whatever needs to happen to help you to get to that state, do it. So that's another one. Yeah, and another good advice for, for everyone who attended workshop. Oh, and, and the pigs. Speaking of pigs, I love yeah, those two next to the... You got them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made friends. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, they, they learned a lot, uh, not the pigs. Oh, the <laughs> what, about, what did I the pigs they, learn? I guess they <laughs> learned smart. something too. Yeah. <laughs> Being closer to the student, they must learn something. Yeah. But yeah, and, and what did you learn from the students or the pigs? I mean, <laughs> what have you learned lately from the people you work with, the people you're teaching? The main, I guess the whole workshop experience um, made me formulate organize my own thoughts that are scattered during the creation process and actually when you say something sometimes when you uh, vocalize your thoughts things become clearer even though you have been doing certain things but when you organize them and you say it to someone out loud so I think that just from discussing and sharing with people the honest experience I got the ideas for what I want to do and how how I want to try certain things and experiment experiment when when we go back to the studios. So it's more like you just said that, so go back home and do it too. I think it's it's that that's why it's important to spend a lot of time on your own as an artist, but art community is as important. Because when the experience is shared, it just reminds you you're not alone. Like we were talking to artists and some of them say, Oh, we don't have any uh, too many artists or painters living in the area. Well, now we know that there is many of us around the world and like we got stuck in a hurricane in uh, Barcelona while coming here. The, thir the first thing we did, like we know we have artist family here. So uh, we reached out to, to beautiful people of Barcelona Academy of Art and they welcomed us and... They're great people. Yeah, yeah. they're great people and we're grateful for all for the art community that we have around the world. That's the main thing. You have another home about. in here. Thank you. <laughs> and um, well, we were talking that there were animals outside the mm -hmm. studio. And uh, maybe the, the ego is another animal we should live outside the studio as well. Ego? Yeah. Absolutely. And the more, the more you put the hard, honest work into, into what you do creatively, the more humbling experience it becomes because the more you learn the more you realize how much you still don't know and I think that's one of the reasons why I also like painting so much because it always keeps you on your toes and keeps your ego down because there is no space there is no space for it there is the space is already full so please stay out of the door yeah definitely it's a very humbling experience but is it a struggle or is it easy for you at this time, like taming your ego or, or do you I still struggle with it? I have a, I have a different... Uh, ego is not a struggle uh, because the whole experience, as I said, is incredibly humbling. I think the experience I'm still not getting a, get, getting a hang of is the experience of self undermining myself, uh, self-doubt. That's the biggest, um, the biggest wild animal I still need to tame. Uh, but there are ways. Once again, you just sit down, see what can you do, what things that make you feel confident again and help you move forward. So that's, that's another thing that every artist should be aware of. Most of your, well not most, but many of your characters are like powerful women, but it's not a statement. It's not a statement. None of my artwork is a statement. It's, uh, it's that thing that I call self-digging. Self um, sometimes things happen in a painting that you don't know where they came from. You, you surprise yourself, so you only can guess, and this is why I like to paint this. You can only guess. This is why you just trust your gut. You want to paint this, you go for it. Um, I was thinking maybe it's because when, when I was a concept artist I got to discover this whole idea of a strong, darker woman when I was designing um, different witch type of characters, sirens type of characters. But then when you switch into researching it from an emotional point of view, it's also very interesting because every person has a dark and a light side. And as a woman, because I live, live my life as a woman, that's something I can speak about honestly, I think, and explore honestly. 
And also, as I said, I believe that there are both sides, strong and vulnerable in men, so I do the same to my male characters. I explore both sides. Yeah, that's, that's true. And um, yeah, your characters are very particular. So uh, a couple of questions that the students made were related to the fact if, if you believe in any supernatural things, like specific or not, I mean, like God or whatever, I mean, it doesn't have to uh -huh. be specific, but if you believe in any supernatural stuff or something beyond the human sphere, so to say, then how it affected you? I believe in giving everything unexplained, giving it the benefit of a doubt. That's what I believe in. I don't, once again, I try to stay away at coming, jumping to a conclusion of what it is, putting a name on it. Because we human beings tend to think that we know everything. We even thought that when all the humans thought that the world is flat and it was held up uh, by, by three elephants, was it? Um, so knowing that that already happened, this type of judgment, and suddenly you realize all, everyone was wrong, and all the mythology, if you trace it back, you can explain right now scientifically. So I try not to jump into conclusion and just give myself a benefit of a doubt. Maybe that's what I saw, maybe that's what I think, but maybe not. And, makes, and it also, by doing that, it doesn't stop uh, the ability to wonder and research it further. Because once you explain it to yourself, settle on a solution of what it is, that's supernatural, you kind of stop wondering and researching it. So I think the sense of wonder uh, is important here. So, I don't know, I don't tend to I believe but I also don't disbelieve. Uh, I, I know one thing, that we're definitely not the smartest thing in the whole universe. And Jeremy was talking about the, the human, human races that lived before our race appeared. And that's incredibly interesting. What were they like about? So we can't, we can't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I leave it a benefit of a doubt and I, I hope that we'll come closer to researching it. But I, I, I prefer not to settle on... But at least you're interested in it. Absolutely. Topic. You have to stay curious. If you're an artist, you have to stay curious about everything. Well, both you and Jeremy are like very curious and very active. I, I was telling him that uh, I think I didn't see you uh, walking in the whole week. You were running everywhere. Uh, mostly Jeremy, I mean... Uh -huh. Don't you ever tell him, like, stop, <laughs> stay still for a while. It's worse. It's worse. Like he can, I, think, I think that part of <laughs> self-exhaustion is a part of the... It's a part of the whole package of being an artist. You, the same thing happens in the studio. The same thing happens at home. And we were saying it to, to the students. The reason why it seems to be so intense, because this is how our life as artists is. It's incredibly intense, hard-working experience, but whatever, however it is, in the end, we love it. So it's just a part of the whole thing. Well, we love intense experience. That's why yeah. we created this immersive concept of a Menorca Pulsar. And uh, how has your experience, just as an ending, how has this, your experience been with this immersive concept of living with, uh, with all the students, like 24-7, so immersively? Uh, how was your experience here in Menorca? Loved it. It's amazing. It, uh, the, once again, like Jeremy said, it's exhausting, but it's something that you expect because good things don't come easy. And it was a great thing. So, And I'm sure the students are as exhausted, but it's a transformative experience. Even though it's not the first time for us to teach this type of experience, every time it's a new transformative experience. So we are grateful for this, for this opportunity to, to you and Carlos that you believed in our idea as well and you helped for this idea to happen. We are grateful to the students for their generosity of sharing and opening up and uh, trusting in this experience. So we are as grateful as everyone else. Yeah, we are too, that you trusted our, our project and well, there's no need to say that you got a home in here and we'll Thank be you. so happy to have you back, you both or any of you separately. I mean, you, got a, you. you got a home in here. Thank and, you. And uh, well, cheers to having you cheers. back. And cheers. It's cheers. been a pleasure. <laughs>